Okay, I think we're upside right here. Um, these are the solutions for numbers 9 through 13 from your practice physics test, AP Physics C. Um, here we have, um, as shown in the figure above, a child of mass 20 kilograms is running at a speed of 4 meters per second, jumps onto a stationary sled of mass 5 kilograms on a frozen lake. The speed at which the child and sled begin to slide across the ice is most nearly, well this is a collision of types, right, so of sorts. Now, this is a um, conservation of momentum question. So we need to remember that uh, in number 9 here that the initial momentum must be equal to the final momentum of everything involved in the collision. So before the jump, the only thing that's moving is the child and she is running at 4 meters per second. So mass times velocity and that's it, the sled's not moving. So Then afterwards they stick together so we've got a child and sled and we don't know what the final velocity is. So multiplying, that's 80 and dividing by 25. Well, 75 divided by 25 would be 3. So 3 and a bit, looks like. And that would be answer choice D, 3.2 meters per second. And um, I think even just like an intuitive guess here, like certainly they're not going faster, right? That doesn't make any sense. And these all, anyway, to me, those all seem like they're much too slow because um, the sled is lighter than the child. So anyway, the math is simple enough. Conservation of momentum. Um, number 10, this is conservation of momentum again. A toy spacecraft is launched directly upward. When the toy reaches its highest point, a spring is released and the toy splits into two parts with masses 0 0.02 kilograms and 0 0.08 kilograms. Um, immediately after separation, the 0 0.02 kilogram part moves horizontally due east, and we're ignoring air resistance. True statements about the 8 kilogram object would be which of the following. Now let's draw a little picture of this. So, toy rocket went up, and then at the top, it broke into two pieces. One of them is 0.8 kilograms, and one of them is 0.2 kilograms. And this one, the 0.2, the less massive, oh sorry, those are supposed to be 0 0.02 and 0 0.08. Not that that matters at all. This one moves due east. Um, I think it should be clear to you that, um, well, hope, once you realize this is a conservation of momentum anyway, then if momentum is conserved, this one's going to have to move due west. Right? There's no way the vectors could cancel out. If this one's all east, this one has to be all west. And in fact, let's see, if mass times velocity in this direction is going to be equal to mass times velocity in this direction, because their momentum in this direction initially it was going straight up was zero, right? It stopped at the top. It was momentarily, instantaneously stopped. No momentum. And then, boom, they split apart. So those two have to be equal. That means that the point zero 0.02 is going to have to have a bigger velocity to equal this. So this one will be going slower, and this one will be going faster. It's lighter, so it's going to go faster. should make sense. All right, let's see if, what the answers look like. Um, it could move north immediately after the spring is released. No, it's got to move west, so that's not true. Um, it takes longer to reach the ground. Well, we know if we drop two things... Um, with no vertical velocity, which these ones do not have, they'll hit the ground at the same time. So that's not true. Um, it strikes the ground farther from the launch point than does the 0 0.02 kilogram part. That might be tempting, but that's actually the opposite of what happens. This one goes farther, and the 0 .8, 0 0.08 is closer, right? Since this one is less massive, it has to have a bigger velocity for mv to equal mv. So the correct answer is none. Kind of tricky. Um, let's see, how about this? A student initially stands on a circular platform 
that is free to rotate without friction about its center. Student jumps off tangentially, setting the platform spinning. Quantities that are conserved for the student platform system as the student jumps include which of the following. Let's see. We, we know that all three of these things are, are can be conserved in different situations. Now this is a student jumping off and that will send the platform rotating in the other direction. Um, we know if we were going to actually solve a problem like this, we would use conservation of angular momentum to do it. Angular moment momentum is always conserved. Um, linear momentum? Well, the problem with that is the, uh, you can't talk about the linear momentum of a rotating platform because it doesn't have any translational velocity. So linear momentum, the, um, the student will certainly gain some, but the platform gains angular momentum only. So this is actually not conserved in this case. Um, if it were like a frictionless platform or a platform on a frictionless surface and it slid off in this direction, kind of like the child on the sled, um, then we would have conservation of linear momentum. But here we do not because this doesn't have any. We only talk about its angular momentum. And kinetic energy, well, that's conserved sometimes. Um, actually, usually total energy is conserved. <clears throat> Kinetic energy is conserved in elastic collisions, right, where things don't stick together. And um, these things are not sticking together, but at the beginning, there was no kinetic energy, right? Everything was stationary. And at the end, student has some, and this has rotational. So we're going from zero energy, kinetic energy, to having energy. So that's not conserved either. So the correct answer is one only. Number 12, oh, this is right up our alley. We've been talking about this recently in class. Um, in an experiment with a simple pendulum, measurements of the period T uh, of the pendulum are made for different values of L. When plotted on a graph, which of the following should result in a straight line fit? Well, T equals 2 pi to the square root of L over G. So if you want to linearize this, we would do, like if this were a free response question and they wanted us to graph and find an experimental value of g, then there's our experimental values, so t squared versus l. And notice that would graph like y equals, that would be our slope of our graph, y equals mx. And they follow that convention, so it's y-axis versus l, right? They didn't say, they didn't actually give you the choice of l versus t squared, but it should be t squared versus l. Okay, that's answer choice D. Um, number 13, a comet moves in the sun's gravitational field, passing this way. We know that as it gets closer and closer to the sun, the force, the gravitational force, which is GMM over R squared, that's the mass of the sun, the mass of the comet, as it gets closer and closer, the R gets smaller and smaller, so this gets bigger and bigger, means more and more acceleration, and the maximum velocity happens when its derivative or acceleration is, um, is equal to hold on a second, let me make sure I'm not leading you astray here. The maximum velocity is going to happen right here, right? That's where the force is greatest, right? I guess I'm thinking of a linear situation, and this is like angular, right? The force is always toward the center, so it's a little bit different than just our regular one-dimensional system. Um, but we know that Kepler's laws, uh, we know that as it gets closer and closer, it's going to move faster and then slower as it gets further away. So um, what happens to its angular momentum as it moves from x to y. Well, the, the whole Kepler's third law that period squared is equal to 4 pi squared over gm times r cubed, that is a consequence of the fact that angular momentum is always conserved. This comes from that. So um, it remains constant, right? Just like in problem number 11, angular momentum is conserved. Um, 
it does not increase, the velocity does. Um, it doesn't decrease. Um, it, let's see, it increases as it approaches the sun. No, that's not true, it's always conserved. This would be true of the force or the acceleration, and um, this would be true of the velocity. So the angular momentum is constant.